We've had a ton of questions come in over the last few weeks regarding Starlink's recent change to their pause feature. In this episode, we'll go through everything you need to know about the change to pause and what they're replacing it with. And there might be some surprising details that you might have missed in the fine print. We're going to discuss all of this and more. Stay tuned. Hi, we're the Popple People. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not new, welcome back. If you found this video, you may have heard that Starlink is doing away with their popular pause feature on the Roam plans. Now, this pause feature allowed you to stop your service for a month or two at a time when you're not using your dish. It was super convenient. This was free of charge. You could pause and unpause your Roam service at any time with just the quick toggle of a button in the app. And we really liked this feature. It's actually one of the main reasons we purchased our Starlink to begin with. So we bought a Gen 3 standard Starlink about a year ago, and we got it to bring along when we travel and to use in remote and off-grid locations. We used it quite a bit this summer when we drove the Alcan Highway to Alaska. And then we also use our Starlink in emergencies at home as a backup option in case our regular internet is down for some reason. And for the past year, it's worked great for these purposes. But now, Starlink is replacing its pause feature with something called standby mode, which is not free. Now, this change is set to go into effect around mid-September 2025. If you opt into standby mode, you'll be charged $5 a month every month to keep your dish on standby. If you don't want to do this and your plan is currently paused, Starlink will automatically cancel your service on September 13th, 2025, according to recent emails from Starlink. We fall into this category. We're paused right now and are being forced to choose between having to pay $5 a month every month or Starlink canceling our Roam plan. So as we talk through this, we're going to cover the pros and cons and all the other things to consider about this change. So let's talk pros first. Standby mode includes unlimited low-speed data for $5 a month, which the email says could cover things like calls, texts, and reactivating your dish should you need to reactivate and return to your previous service plan. The standby would also allow for your dish to receive any updates that are needed for the software. So you're looking at $60 per year if you just keep your dish in standby mode. $5 to keep your dish semi-active might sound enticing, but just some food for thought here. Will that price start creeping up over time? It's certainly possible, so keep that in mind. The other major change with standby mode is that residential plans will have the option to go on standby too. The previous pause feature was only available to Starlink's Rome customers. Folks on the residential plans, they had to cancel if they wanted to stop their monthly payments. They did not have an option before to pause and unpause their service. Now that being said, be aware that the fine print says that keeping your dish on standby um, if you have a residential slot, it will not hold your slot for a regular residential plan. If your area is congested and it fills, when you go back to resume your residential service, you could end up waitlisted and unable to get back on in your area if it's congested and at capacity. So going on standby, you might be giving up your spot. Be sure to take that into consideration too. All right, now for the cons. The biggest glaring one is the loss of simply being able to pause your service with a toggle of a button in the app and not be billed for however long. Now, if you don't want to be billed, you'll be forced to cancel your service altogether and then reactivate if you want to use your dish again. And that's a bummer. Not that it was difficult to activate the dish. See our previous video. I'll drop the link to it in the description below. But I just really don't want to have to spend that 20 minutes every time I want to use my dish. You know what I mean? It's the inconvenience of it. It doesn't sit right just to have to pay to keep my dish stored away. It's like having a $60 annual fee to keep the dish sitting in its case under the bed. We liked being able to pause our service for $0 a month instead of $5 a month. And it's not even necessarily about paying $5 a month. It's about taking away an option we were given and being told you have a few weeks to do it or get out. There's no in between. There's no being grandfathered in for us existing customers. I mean, yeah, the actual dollar amount is low and there are certainly people out there who might find this to be a great deal. But still, it's not the deal we signed up for when we decided to purchase our Starlink. And that was less than a year ago. 
It feels kind of bait and switchy. In addition to this, Starlink also discontinued their $10 for 10 gigs plan, which I know some people got Starlink just for that low cost option to use while camping like one weekend a month. And now that plan that actually just rolled out like maybe five months ago, I think I got that email in April of 2025, that 10 for 10 option has been taken away altogether. Now, that being said, if you actively have the 10 for 10 plan right now, I don't know if that will continue so long as you don't change anything. But if you look at the Starlink plan options that are available now, that 10 for 10 is no longer on the list. So just an FYI on that. The other part of this that just doesn't sit well is they're trying to market this as an upgrade to you to pay for low speed service while the dish is literally just sitting in its case a good portion of the year. So they're upgrading me from $0 a month to $5 a month. <laughs> what? I mean, cheers to their marketing team who came up with that. Let's call it an upgrade. In terms of marketing, it's very clever. You gotta give them that. So another red flag that I noticed in the terms of service it says that in the fine print, if you constantly use standby mode continuously for more than 12 months, you might be forced to upgrade to a higher price plan or they can restrict your access. So be aware of that. It's in the fine print. It's easy to miss that one, but lucky for you, I comb through that kind of stuff. So if you are looking at the standby mode as a way to get unlimited calling and texting for $60 a year, well... What comes to mind is the old adage, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Don't want to get hornswoggled by that fine print. For people like us who are using our dish primarily while traveling and camping and really only want to use it a few times a year, having that free pause feature was a significant selling point. We're not loving the no more free pause thing. It was nice and extremely convenient to be able to keep your dish ready to roll even if your service was paused for a month or two. And then you could unpause when you want service again and your dish would just start working again in mere minutes. Now they're forcing you to pay $5 a month to retain that ability. They're forcing you into this if you don't want to get canceled. Let's talk about that part for a minute. Let's say you do nothing with your paused service and September 13th rolls around and Starlink cancels your service. Now you need to reactivate again if you want your dish to work. The Starlink website mentions an activation fee for new service, and that got me thinking. What if they start treating these reactivations from folks who declined the standby upgrade? What if the future of Starlink decides to treat those like a new service, they could start implementing like a reactivation fee. This could be a loophole sort of way for Starling to try and nudge people into paying for that $5 standby mode instead of canceling their service altogether, and then possibly having to pay a fee to reactivate later. Keep that in the back of your mind. It's a possibility. Well, our verdict on this it's unfortunate. Forcing you to pay each month, even if you aren't going to have your dish plugged in. For people like us who use Starlink mostly just when we travel, our dish sits in its case for months at a time. I hate paying a subscription fee for something that isn't being used. Sorry, folks, on this one, we're seeing the cons outweigh the pros this time, which is really crummy because we really do like our Starlink and it does work well. It sounds like it'll be a pain to have to reactivate the Starlink every time we want to use it, though. So... What are your thoughts on this change to standby mode? Are you thumbs up all for it? Or are you thumbs down, not liking how it sounds? Or are you still in sheer confusion about the whole change? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. We'd sure appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing to our channel. Just tap that colorful circle on the screen, and that way you can be a popple people too. We'll see you soon.